Welcome to The Range with your host, Brendan Brown. And here is your panel, the one and only Cleveland Spears, J.B. Brown, and the Honorable Chris Gallen. And to start off today's discussion, we will go with sports. Cleveland, start it off. All right, let me tell you about something that very much disturbed me when I first heard this story break. The NCAA wants to expand the men's basketball tournament from 65 teams to 96 teams. That is crazy. All of a sudden, I'm just sitting here, I'm thinking to myself, you know what, I'm used to this three-week tournament that takes place only on the weekend. Now you're talking about games being in the middle of the week or even possibly adding another week, which is kind of crazy because March Madness already ends in April. But, like I said, but like I heard earlier, people thought it was absurd when they thought to go from 32 to 64 teams. People said, man, that's crazy. It'll never work. Possibly it has worked. Now, I'm not saying this won't work. I just think it's a bad idea. I think we're getting slowly to the point where everybody's going to get in. Just like in Indiana, the high schools, all the high schools make the section of playoffs. You might as well go ahead and put 327 teams into the pool. Not liking that, not one bit. I would like, because, I mean, that's just, you basically saying the regular season doesn't matter. You can play a guaranteed 18 games and be the lowest seed and lose all your games in a regular season. But then again, you're talking about playing a game just about every day in March. Or you're taking time away from the conference tournaments, which bring in a lot of money, especially on networks, on TV networks. So, I mean, this is crazy. If I'm the NCAA, I, I would say to just stop this whole expansion talk and keep it at 65 teams. I don't really like the 65 teams. Because the playing game, nobody watches. So put it down to 64, leave it at that, and let them play out from there. Yeah, exactly, man, because I feel the same way. Because 65, I mean, the winner of that playing game really loses because they get the top seed in the tournament. Like last year with, uh, actually, no, year before that, uh, that Morgan State had to go against North Carolina, and they got blasted by, what, 65 points? I mean, you're thinking, like, what's the point? I mean, you get the first win, but you really get the first loss. And with that expanding, if they were to do that, I mean, that's taking time away from some of the teams to get some of the players rested and recuperated. Especially if you go, if you have a physical offense or or physical defense, I mean, your players are going to be hurt. They're going to be tired, sore, banged up. I mean, you're asking for you're asking for a lot of injuries, a lot more injuries, and a lot a lot less time for preparation. Well, against these two, I feel that they should expand it to 96 teams. With that being said, the, first, the top 32 will, of course, get the first round by, and then the other 64 will fight for the rest of them. Right. With this being said, of course, it might, just like you said, with in, it could cause injuries, especially for the lower, lower teams, especially like 75 or below, going against the, the upper team between like 32 to 45. It might cause injuries could possibly be, but with March Madness, adding another week into it will create even more madness. Because it'll end in April. Still, it already ends in April now. So might as well add more madness to the March. <laughs> of course, you know, just like any other organization as far as NCAA football, add more bowls. Mm -hmm. So they can have even more teams, which we probably would think Nobody wants to see those teams play anyway because, you know, nowadays, the bowl games that they do have, we don't even care who's playing because we don't want to see them. <laughs> Most of them don't make sense. But it's for, <laughs> for those schools, they earn money. That's true. Which they need. And for some of the lower schools, they might earn money. The only problem is that more than likely it's going to only benefit the bigger conferences. Like, lower conferences won't get any more Teams, but just that one team that wins the conference but tournament. This, I mean, is the, you take a lot of pride in being that top 65 teams. Well, now you got to take top pride in being the top 96 teams. 
I can understand that. that. That's just crazy. I mean, that's espe espe especially if you have, what, you can only have so many Cinderella's in the tournament. I mean, And that probably puts an end to you know, a team making it for the first time. A team making it for the first time in 15, 16 years. It puts an end to that because that team is probably on the bubble anyway. You put a, a team like this year's North Carolina team, who really shouldn't be in the tournament, they'll be in the tournament. That, that's true, but I guess the, that's, the that's ridiculous. Way, the only thing you probably could do was sanction off how many spots from each conference can make the tournament. That'd probably be the only thing. A lot of people wouldn't agree with that because they wouldn't want to see a Colonial League only get get two or three spots or yeah. a Southland Conference. They probably just want them to keep their one spot and then have the ACC, SEC, yeah. get ten to almost every team in there, which you can't do that. Yeah. So it, it all depends on how they how they formulate the entire situation about having 96 teams. Yeah, like last year, I remember uh, Stephen Curry with Davidson. I mean, they, Davidson pretty much was like the Cinderella of the previous year's tournament, and everyone starts to know this. Everyone knows this guy now because what he did and like all those upsets that he pulled out. I mean, he's dropping 40 on like the top on the top tier teams, and he couldn't even get in last year mainly because they had losses and strength their strength of schedule and their RPI is what doomed them. So leading into that, we're gonna go into another one. Uh Plex Colbert's you got you might remember him, the guy who caught the game when he passed against the Patriots. He's currently locked he's currently locked up in jail and he says he vows to play in the NFL again in an interview with Steelers former Steelers head coach Bill Cower. Now Hey, he could possibly still come back and make a contribution. He's got a lot of size. I mean, the game game obviously is going to get changed. It's going to be changed. It's going to be faster. But I mean, the guy. Now you put him in the field. I mean, he's pretty clutch. Now I, I like Plexico. I mean, he did make a dumb mistake. But if you look at his attributes, the guy's about about six between six four to six six. He can run the field good. Good route runner. Got good hands. And, he, and he's prime time. He's prime time. He's not necessarily a prima donna. He doesn't always be in the media. But when he's on that field, any quarterback in the NFL would love to have him, including Jamarcus Russell. <laughs> Are you trying to throw in the Raiders for this? You saying they the jailboat Raiders? You saying uh, you want to throw your hat in? He has all the qualifications to be a Raider. That's true. Yeah, that okay. is true. Okay. Well, I tell you what. Everybody's comparing this to Michael Vick. I, I, I don't see exactly where this is the same. Michael Vick made himself on speed. Plaxico Burris is not known for his speed. He's known for his hands. He's known for just catching the ball when it needs to be caught and getting extra yards afterward. He's not known for having this burst of speed that Michael Vick had. And Michael Vick's situation wasn't just, wasn't just a personal thing. Michael Vick was dealing with a community. He could have played with any team this season, but the team really didn't want to deal with, you know, Peter coming in, animal rights group coming in. So the Philadelphia Eagles said, you know what, we'll take a shot at it. Any other team wouldn't have done that. And they Who, made the playoffs. What's, what's yeah. going to happen? What's going to happen when Plastico Burris comes out? There's going to be a lot of teams that need wide receivers. As always, Jacksonville, mm -hmm. the Raiders. The Niners, Cleveland, Cleveland. Yeah, I said it. The, the, the Cowboys. San gonna, the San Francisco 49ers will need one. The Lions. What's not? The Lions. Everybody, need one. Everybody yeah. will need one. Every one of these receivers. But I'll tell you what, though. It doesn't matter because it's just really right now, this dude can do it. He can still play the game, and he'll be okay. We'll be right back with more sports issues right here on The Range. <laughs> Thank you.